In the next few videos, we're going to be adding WebSocket support to our application. But before we get into the code, I think it's worth spending a few minutes going over when you should consider using WebSockets. I definitely wouldn't reach to use WebSockets for everything, but there are certain classes of applications or application features that benefit greatly from using WebSockets. A classic example would be a chat room, and the general pattern here is that you want to send messages to a number of other users in the system, but you also want those users to receive messages from other users in the system as well. You could say that you want to set up a two-way binding between each user and your chat server. Your chat server would be responsible for broadcasting those messages to the appropriate users. And technically, you could solve this type of problem without using WebSockets by using another strategy called long polling. In the context of a chat room with long polling, you could set up an AJAX request on the client side, which would contact the chat server at a regular interval. Perhaps this is every 3 seconds or 10 seconds, whatever you think works best for your app. The limitation with long polling would be that you could potentially get a bunch of lines of chat in between each polling interval. In a popular chat room, you might get something like 6 individual chat lines in the span of 3 seconds, and that makes it hard to keep track of. But let's be real now. In most cases, long polling here would work. That is, until you want to add some polish to your chat room. For example, I find it really helpful to know that a user is actively typing something. If I see a little animated dot 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 icon spinning, then I can see someone is busy writing a message, and I may decide to wait until they're done before I send my message. With WebSockets, this is really easy to pull off. You would just send a WebSocket event every time the user pressed the key. Or, if you cared about efficiency, you may decide to add in a bit more logic, which only sends the event after the user stopped typing for a few seconds. In either case, it's really easy to pull off. Then, each chat recipient would listen for that type of WebSocket event and show the chat animation icon next to the correct user when it fires off. Easy peasy. Doing something like that with long polling, on the other hand, would be a total nightmare. Another good use case for WebSockets is when you want to send something from your server to everyone who is listening. For example, if you were hooking into Twitter's API on the backend and were watching the hashtag cats for activity, you may want to broadcast those cat messages through your app as they come in. You can even push your WebSocket events through Celery to rate limit them. That would be pretty tricky to pull off with long polling. If you want to start extracting patterns from these examples, you could say the chat app is a form of two-way binding. Users broadcast some form of input, and other users receive that input, which ends up being output from their point of view. This would make sense for any type of collaboration-based application, such as real-time multi-user document editing like Google Docs or a game like chess. In the Twitter example, you could categorize that as a push event pattern. This is where you have something happen on the server side, and you want to push that data to clients who are interested. In this case, the client isn't sending anything back to the server in real time, they are just receiving data. In some cases, long polling might be okay here if you are implementing something like having comments get added to the bottom of a blog post automatically. But in other time-sensitive cases, WebSockets is a much better choice. Another really cool feature that works well with WebSockets is the idea of showing who's online. This is really handy for chat rooms because you would expect to see a list of everyone who is in the room, and if they leave, then they would disappear from the list. This feature isn't limited to just chat rooms too. You could attach it to almost anything. If you had an online forum, you may want to use this feature to see who's currently logged in. Or if you were running your own SaaS application, you may want to get a real-time look at who's using specific features of your app. You get the idea. Now, you might be thinking, wow, WebSockets are really cool, but how hard is it to get WebSockets to work? Lucky for us, we don't need to worry about too much because services like Pusher.com exist. If you finished my main Build a SaaS app with Flask course, you know that Stripe is a popular service to accept payments. Pusher is sort of like that, except instead of dealing with payments, they give you a WebSocket server to use as a service. After making an account with them and then creating an app, you would end up getting API keys that hook up into your Flask app, and then you would use Pusher's Python and JavaScript libraries to send and receive WebSocket events. That's pretty cool because they've built some really nice abstractions for us which allow us to communicate over public and private WebSocket channels. They even make it dead simple to implement a Who's Online feature because that's available out of the box. 
They are even working on providing chat as a service. I'm really looking forward to that when it's released. At the time of making this video, it's not quite ready yet, but it should be available soon. Now, Pusher isn't the only way to get WebSockets into your app. There are open source solutions available, like Fay. The idea here is, you would spin up a Fay service on your own, but then you would be responsible for implementing everything like public channels, private channels, authentication, and so on. I used to use Fay back in the day, but then I realized that I'm more interested in building cool apps. My time is much better spent concentrating on my app's core business logic, and then outsourcing WebSockets to Pusher.com, because that's their core business. Pusher has been around since 2011, and a lot of really big companies like GitHub trust them for their WebSocket needs. They also have a pretty sweet free plan where you can send up to 200,000 WebSocket events a day for free, no strings attached. With that said, I've chosen to use Pusher in this course, and in the next few videos, we're going to be adding WebSocket support into our existing application. That's going to include using public channels, private channels, authentication, and even building a Who's Online feature. I'll see you there.